Wouldn't you love to make something that stands the test of time and that people can listen to decades in the future and still be amazed by? So I found one of the most powerful ways to improve is to study the classics. So today I want to unlock the secrets of Plastic Dreams. It's widely regarded as one of the best dance tracks of all time. By breaking down exactly how this track was made, what went into it, the techniques and the gear used, we'll learn things that aren't just interesting, they're crucial for any producer who wants their music to rise above the huge amount of paint by numbers dance music that's around today. And if you want to get the Ableton project free and the audio and MIDI if you don't use Ableton, hit the link in the description. We have the main organ sound, the iconic sound of this track. So the actual synth used was Yamaha TX81Z, which is an FM synth. For the recreation, I'm using Arturia's DX7V, looks like this. And it's this preset, ROM 1A, 17E Organ 1. Some effects on it, actually low passed it a little bit, bit of delay and a bit of reverb. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> so how can something you do completely by accident turn into an, an iconic sound in a track? So the story goes, he was in the studio having a cup of tea or coffee and he reaches over and his elbow just knocks the lowest key on a synth. And the sound it makes is this. And he's like, hmm, quite like that, stick it in a tune. And this track without that sound, it just goes throughout the whole track and it just wouldn't be the same. Like we can have a little bit of a listen from a bit further on. Just not the same at all, is it? So I searched high and low to try and find this sound. One of my Bibles for making this video was a gear space thread in which someone gave a lot of details and a gear list. And so one of the things in the gear list was a JD800. I've got the Roland Cloud soft synth. I'd searched through playing the lowest note on so many things. I just couldn't find it. I'm sure it is that kind of synth because if you listen to the sound, there's a few parts to it. Like if we listen to it soloed. There's like a belly bit and there's a like a, there's a bit of rhythmic stuff going on. So I feel really sure that it was one of these kind of synths, but I couldn't find it. If you tell me what it is, I'll be eternally grateful because I really wanted to find the actual thing but I just couldn't. This is something massive we can actually take away with us into doing our own production. And it's just to be like aware of the potential of happy accidents. Like if you make a weird sound, just think about including it. Or if you do something by mistake, sometimes the best ideas come that way. I actually found on YouTube, there's a video where uh, someone's doing a remix and he just plays it on its own. So I nabbed it from there and then I just put it in a simpler, yeah, it's just got this very simple pattern like this. But it just shows the power of happy accidents in making a classic tune. It's all about being kind of open-minded when you're making a tune and open to possibilities. And if you're in that kind of receptive state, if something like that happens, you're much more likely to use it rather than just get rid of it. So we've got an 808 drum machine. We've got this cymbal and these maracas. Here we have a 606 hat coming in. So we've just got really nice layering of classic drum machines, 606 hat, 808. And then in a minute we get the 909 kick. Classic 909 kick and a clap. Then there's like a kind of hip hop break and I literally spent hours going through all these classic breaks and these classic sample packs and I couldn't find it but when I found this break I did this slight edit to make it closer and I also added this break. So it's very quiet. And I think it's to capture like, it's almost the reverb of the snare. 
So without it, it's like this. Yeah, the story goes, JD played this track out for a few weeks and he kept tweaking the mix and it's really a work of art. That's one of the things, and especially the layering of the drums, it just sounds so nice. One of the big things about this track is its simplicity. There's basically drums, organ, weird sound. That's it. How does it keep our interest? Well, mainly it's just the organ changing all the time, basically. We have a few riffs that kind of are staples and but generally it just keeps changing and changing and changing. You can hear that these aren't exactly on the grid and they're a bit off. And I deliberately did that because that's how they were played in and this is a massive part of the track. It's the humanity of it, it's not quantized and he was told to quantize it. When people heard it, they were like, you need to quantize this and actually record companies heard it and they're like, I'm not putting this out, it sounds weird and it's, and it's a bit wrong. But it's the imperfection that means we're still talking about it three decades later, do you know what I mean? So so let's just say the difference between the original or my version that I've played in and if we quantize that. That, da -da -da, that's quite off. So if we just, Quantize that to 16 quite rigidly. So that's now all exactly on the grid. It's just lost something. I mean, in a way it sounds fine, but like that, it's just a lot more robotic and this bit. This is something I really encourage you to put in your own tracks. This is something I really try and do in mine. Even if you do want to quantize a bit, don't do 100%, maybe quantize to 50%. How did he make it? He, he played it in. He said he had piano lessons for a year before. And it's basically, it's a blues scale. So it's, it's quite unusual in dance music, I find, to use, to do something so bluesy. It just sounds a bit like, yeah, that's not very techno, is it? The way he played it first, it's very like riffy, like. So when he made this, basically he came back from clubbing and he just kind of made it in a few hours overnight. Let's look in a bit more detail how he did it because it's not quite as simple as just playing the organ all the way through. So I think sometimes what he does, he plays it in and then copies that twice. Okay, and then we get these loops. I wasn't able to find the exact ones, but I got something that I feel like was pretty close. Got quite a heart heavy EQ on, a lot of high passing. But I think it gives it the vibe. If you listen to the original. So yeah, there's another kind of organ comes in here. Which I don't think is the same patch. Um, I've used an M1 organ. As it goes on, it just kind of gets really crazy. And the only way I could do it was by slowing it right down. So this is a technique I have mentioned before. Playing along, but I slowed it right down to like 60. I suspect he might have done this to play it in because if he'd only been playing for a year, how could he play such fast? <laughs> So here there's an interesting bit. 
this is this chord. I think it's a G. It's a fifth. So I played a bit higher. I used another instance of this and and I had to find, I had to go to the advanced and go to global and change the pitch bend to four because it was set on two. But if, if you do that, then, then the pitch wheel. So that's how you get that sound. So there he's doing fifths as well. Which I found quite hard to do. So there's so much to take away from this absolute banger. The originality, the human touch of playing stuff in, utilizing accidents if, if they sound good. And if you want to know about how a UK producer broke the mold and created an absolute classic, click here for this video. <laughs>